Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to start off by apologizing for my voice. I'm clearly a little bit sick, but the show must go on. We're going to record this video. Today's video is going to be about AI and my opinions on it. Um, the last video was about what radiologists do outside the reading room, so things that we actually do in person. So in my opinion, things that you know, a computer can't take over. But today I actually want to talk about AI and actually what I think it's going to do to our field. What is AI? I think that's like a good place to start off. Um, artificial intelligence is basically defined as any time a computer does something that a human could do. So like a self-driving car, for example, is considered artificial intelligence. And you might also hear this term called machine learning, which is basically when you use an algorithm that can improve over time by itself and you don't actually have to continue to improve it, it will learn. So that's what machine learning is and you'll hear about that a lot. And that's really how AI is being used right now in radiology where we're basically feeding an algorithm a ton of data and it learns and it kind of learns how to read a chest x-ray for example. And that's really where this myth that AI is going to take over radiology comes from. It's like, oh, well, if you just feed it a bunch of data, it'll just, you know, it'll know that this is like lung cancer and pneumonia and whatever. And I think that's kind of where the problems begin. So let's talk about that next. The major problem with AI taking over radiology, even with just a chest x-ray, is learning that you have to know what is a ground truth. When you feed data into the um, algorithm, it has to be like pre-labeled, like you have to tell it that this is pneumonia, this is um, atelectasis, this is, you know, cancer. And the problem is that a lot of times in radiology, you'll learn that like, we don't know. We just see something, we describe it, and we can say this could be pneumonia, and this could be cancer, and it's up to the clinician, the ordering provider, to figure out what's really going on. And you know, things present differently in clinical life, and that puts the imaging in context and that really makes a difference for the patient and a lot of times the algorithms don't know they don't know how to understand clinical context they just look at a picture and they spit out you know an answer and so for one person what could be cancer could look just like pneumonia for another patient unless you have that clinical context um, the algorithm won't really know it won't be correct I'll put it that way there's a video by a Stanford I, I don't know if he's a radiologist he might be and I'll link it below, it's really good. And they talk about a brain MRI that is different when a three month old versus a three year old. And the MRIs look very similar, and yet they're completely different because of the age. And again, it's all about clinical context. And that's definitely somewhere, something that we lose with artificial intelligence. You lose that clinical perspective, which we use as radiologists every single day. Another good point that was brought up by the video is the reason that everyone likens, you know, artificial intelligence is taking over radiology is because there are now algorithms that can show a picture of a cat or like a banana and it will be like that's a cat and that's a banana and so why wouldn't we be able to just show it a chest x-ray and it'll be like that's cancer you know like the problem is that those things are not actually equal they're not equivalent and the reason for that is because and the way he puts it in the in the video is that the number of pixels in that picture that show a cat well, it'll be like a whole picture of a cat. It'll be like most of the pixels in that photo show a cat. Versus when you look at a chest x-ray and you see cancer, it's going to be a very small finding. I mean, in many cases, it's a small finding. And most of the pixels will show a normal chest x-ray and normal findings. And only some of those pixels will show something abnormal. So that's another really interesting point and something to consider that these algorithms that are created for other purposes, they don't completely translate into radiology the way that we, you know, everyone is saying. This kind of brings me to my next point about unanswered questions. There's just so much that is unknown about artificial intelligence and I kind of wanted to touch on some of those. The first one that I really have been struggling with is like, who owns the data, you know? Um, we ha have all of these pictures that we've been taking for years and years at these hospitals. And by pictures, I mean x-rays and CTs. And who owns that? Does the patient own it? Does a hospital own it? And then if we're giving it to a tech company, does a tech company own it? I think that's a really important consideration in all of this is who owns all of this data? The next unanswered question is, can we reproduce this technology? If you're in medicine, you know that evidence-based teaching is basically like our golden rule. Everything must be evidence-based. And these algorithms in most cases are proprietary, meaning the tech company doesn't really want to share how they've created it and the data set. They don't want to share their data sets. And that kind of goes against all of the theories in 
medicine about being evidence-based and reproducible that's really how we you know create everything we do for our patients so that's another thing to consider it's like how will we prove this and how will we show that it's reproducible in the same way that modern medicine is being practiced an important consideration is the medical legal perspective i mean as radiologists we are responsible for our read we are responsible for every single finding and i am not sure if ai companies want to take on that kind of responsibility and I think in that sense, it will be beneficial for both parties to just partner instead of one person or the other person taking full responsibility. I think we will work better together. Instead of thinking about how AI is going to take over radiology and how we are going to become obsolete, I think we should really consider the things that AI will help us with. I think one major improvement that we will find is that our work lists will become much more optimize I think is the right word where the more acute studies will be at the top and other studies will be closer to the bottom and I think AI will be able to help us really prioritize in that way and that will be really really helpful for us. AI is also going to be very helpful for orders and ordering physicians. I mean it's not just going to be used by radiology right if it's this amazing thing it will be used by all, all physicians and if they can have an algorithm that tells them the best study to order for the patient, and that isn't just for radiology, but for any order, I think they will utilize it as well, and that will, it will help all of us. The last thing is that I really think that AI is going to make us much more efficient, and we will be able to help more people in less or the same amount of time, you know what I mean? I think it will help bring access to places that don't already have because we will be able to just do so much more even small things like taking measurements and the things that it will do in our everyday life versus also like just helping us diagnose things and be more accurate and in all of these ways we're going to become much faster and be able to bring healthcare to more and more people and i think that's really where the advantage of ai comes into play i don't think that it's reasonable to think that ai will take over all of our jobs i just do not see that happening um but i do think it will help us very very much i don't think that it's anything that we should all be afraid of i think we should welcome it and be able to adapt to it but i just don't think that's going to take over our jobs and i hope that maybe some of what i said resonated with you and you understood and if you don't please feel free to reach out to me on twitter or on instagram i'm yasha gupta md on both and i would love to have a conversation about it anyways thank you all for coming back to my channel and i will see you next week with a new video bye